here from A Recreated Life, and today is Wednesday, day 30 of our Fly Lady Cleaning and Organizing. We're getting ourselves out of chaos in 31 days, and today's day 30. Can you believe it, you guys? Uh, I'm so excited. All right, so um, it's Wednesday, Anti-Procrastination Day. So the first thing I wanna touch upon, I'm so proud of myself, all of the things I did that I have been procrastinating against. First of all, one thing I told you guys a few videos ago, I found a prescription for a painkiller that's really old in my medicine cabinet when we were decluttering the bathroom, and I didn't know what to do with it. Well, today I called the police station in my town, and they do have a place where you can bring old medications. So I had to go out and find some jewelry making things to fix my jewelry. And when I did that, I stopped at the police station and dropped it off. So I'm so proud of myself that I did that. This beautiful little um, decorative uh, thing I had in my kitchen was broken. And I glued that and uh, have a pair of pearl earrings. These are real pearl earrings, you guys. Um, they're real pearl earrings. My ex-husband and I went on a cruise 25 years ago and we picked the oysters, and the little island that we went to, we picked the oysters and we had these earrings made up. And I'm not able to wear them because this one keeps falling off the, the little clasp thingy. So I got some E6000 on it today. Proud of myself for that. So now I can wear those. Um, this necklace I have had for a long time and I absolutely love it for some reason and I think it's the coloration of the string and the, the stone. It goes well with my coloring and every time I wear it I get a ton of compliments and I haven't been able to wear it forever because it's been broken. So I fixed it today. I'm so proud of that. Now another thing I did was while I was cleaning up my bedroom last week, I found this thing. This is a, um, a book, um, a book reader. You clamp it on your book and you can read your, a book in the night. And I had it by my bed. Well, I thought, hey, you know what? I could use that because I like to read at night. And even on the couch or in my wingback chair in the kitchen or in bed, no matter where I am, I always need better light. So I bought batteries for this today. And so that <laughs> I've done really well on my anti-procrastination day. What else did I do? Uh, I finished up my control journal, you guys. So I, I didn't do any video on control journaling today, but I'm gonna show you it tomorrow. I'm pretty excited about that. Oh, and there was another thing I, I was gonna do. I'm helping, kind of helping my sister. She um, is, wants to do a couple craft fairs and, and she there's a couple we wanna go to. She didn't know who to call to call to see about getting a table. Well, I called, made those phone calls today. So. Yay me, I did a lot on my anti-procrastination day. I'm really proud of myself. Okay, all right, so the flight lady's flight plan for today. Um, we're in zone four, the bedroom. Uh, let's see, she, it's Wednesday, we're in zone four, the bedroom, uh, September habit of the month before bed routine. Uh, okay, so anti-procrastination, we already talked about that. Today, she says we're supposed to um, attack our clothes piles. I thought she said that for yesterday, but it's on today too. Um, and like I said, I don't have any piles, but you saw in the video before that I was going over my closet. Oh, and I'm so excited about what I found. I have a pair of sneakers that I wear that I, um, I live in the town where New Balance Factory is and I, they have a huge tent sale every August and a couple, a couple or three maybe even years ago, I went to that big tent sale and bought a, a two or three pair of sneakers and I really don't like them. They are not very comfortable, they're too tight, I think they're narrow, and I don't have narrow feet, I don't have wide feet, they're normal. But these sneakers, they're uncomfortable, they hurt my feet, they hurt my legs, they hurt my back, but you know what, they're good shoes. So I hated to waste the money, I hated to give away a good pair of shoes, so I've been wearing them. Well, when I got in my closet today, I found there was a box under there, a shoe box under there that I thought was another pair of these sneakers that are so uncomfortable. There weren't. They were a pair of a different kind of sneaker. So yay, I took those out and I wore them and you guys are like walking on clouds. I love them. They're so very comfortable. So I swapped them out and I'm going to bring the ones that are so uncomfortable to the thrift store so somebody else can enjoy them. So you guys, I have accomplished like crazy today and I'm so glad that I did. I'm kicking butt today. <laughs> All right, so no clothes piles, but I did go through my closet and find a few things to, um, you know, neaten up. Uh, there's still a couple things I want to do in my closet, but no big deal, no great shakes. All right, so there's a testimonial here, and uh, this lady writes in and says, um, 
Uh-uh. At the end of my third week of the fly, of fly lady routines, I am amazed at how much better things are looking and feeling here. I'm sure you guys are noticing that too. As part of my 27 fling boogie, I headed for my bedroom closet. Listen to this, you guys. You're not going to believe it. I was able to pull out eight kitchen bags of clothes and shoes to donate. Eight garbage bags, you guys. The, uh, the clothes that I need are always getting so wrinkled and knocked onto the floor. Now there's much more room. So the ones that she really does wear, she, they're better taken care of. One thing I am disappointed in myself uh, for is how much money I have wasted buying more than one of something. As I clean out and declutter, I keep finding doubles of things. Yep, if I had if I had kept things organized, I would have saved so much money and space. I really believe that after I get into deeper cleaning and organizing, I am sure that I will save more and more money as I go. Listen, you guys, how many times have we heard that? When I, way back when I first did my uh, started my channel, I believe when I went over that book, uh, The Tightwad Gazette by Amy Decision, I believe she mentioned that in there too, and I mentioned that to you guys, buying doubles. I even find them, as, as careful as I am, I even find them. So there, here she, she's talking about it again. How many times do we hear that, guys? How many times do we have to hear it before we follow their advice, right? <laughs> okay, this one here uh, talks about meal pl menu planning, and I really like her ideas. Um, okay, this lady writes in to Fly Lady and she says, I am a calendar convert and wanted to pass on a technique I use for menu planning. I write each dinner entree name and where I keep the recipe on the top of a post-it note. Cut off just the sticky part so that I have a small sticky strip with a dinner on it and stick it on the day of the week that I'm going to cook that dinner. At the end of the week, I peel off each dinner and bump it up a few weeks on my calendar to a new date, unless no one liked it. Ha ha, she says. Then, uh, when it is time to menu plan for a future week, several days are already planned. Isn't that fabulous? Also, I can switch around the dinners in one week if I need to, like if I forgot a main ingredient and have to bump one meal down a day or two. It works great, she says. Isn't that something? Um, okay, I love that one. She's talking, being very, um, very efficient. I love that. Okay, this one talks about procrastination. This is a morning musing. So the fly lady writes and says, we have looked hard at our procrastinating personalities and why we are so good at putting things off till later. The main reason that we don't do something right now is because we think that it is going to take too much time. And right now, we don't have time or we don't feel like doing it now. I want to look at how this kind of thinking actually creates an avalanche effect. And before we know it, we are suffocating under a heavy load of guilt and we are paralyzed by our non-action. And boy, I do that. Um, for the most part, we are, we are a very a social, happy-go-lucky, spontaneous, vivacious group of people. We love to have fun at anything we do. When it comes to housework or, or other things that we may need to get done, we can come up with every excuse in the world to not do it. The main excuse we use is, I don't have time, when the truth is we really don't want to do it because it is not going to be fun or we don't feel like it. Boy, that's true. I had a really hard time on that jewelry stuff today that I... Uh, while I was doing it, I got really frustrated and I was like, now I know why I put it off because it's really hard. <laughs> okay, um, that is one of the reasons that our fly lady routines get those things out of the way so we can get on with the enjoyable part of our day. She's so right on that. People ask me all the time if I spend all day cleaning. The truth is that as long as I do my simple routine, 15 minutes in the morning and the routine at night, 10 minutes tops, our house is always company ready. This will work for any size home. Now I do have to pick up after myself and keep my hot spots polished. Policed. Uh, this only takes a couple of minutes at the most. Here is what happens when we put something off. Let's start with our before bed routines. This is a good one. Sorry guys, I gotta adjust my camera. It's just a little bit too high. Okay, better. All right. Number one, we go to bed at 1 or 2 a.m. and have to get up at 7. We procrastinated by not going to bed at a decent hour. Then we can't get up on time. Uh, after you hit the snooze button a few times and it is 7.30 and uh, need to get to work on time, we have, uh, we have to leave at 7.45. Now you have 15 minutes to get dressed. 
and out the door and you have no clean clothes. Oops. No one did, uh, not only did you go to bed late, but you did not lay out your clothes for the, for tomorrow. So there, again, you have procrastinated and you're rushing around. Now you are feeling the time crunch uh, and the pressure of being late to work for an appointment again, uh, to work or for an appointment again. Then the guilt starts to pile on. With the guilt comes blaming others and not looking at what our role was in our perpetual tardiness. Then we have martyrdom in the loud yelling voices that just add to the stress along with the guilt. Now we are half dressed, jumping in a car, trying to put on makeup while driving and not paying attention to what we are doing. Not to mention that you have skipped breakfast and there's not even time for a quick drive through the Golden Arches. Well, that could be the only positive thing about rushing, not to know, and no time for negative nutrition with fast food. Number seven, next thing we know, the blue lights are flashing in our rear view mirror and we have yet another speeding ticket to have to explain and pay for. Number eight, that is if we are lucky and we haven't had a car accident with our babies in the car. Very true, you guys. More uh, Number nine, more money wasted all because we procrastinated and didn't go to bed in a decent hour to get up and start our day on the right foot instead of behind the eight ball. Just writing this makes me nauseated. I can't live this way anymore. The constant surge of adrenaline is hard on our bodies. That is very true. We have to find a way to relieve the stress that our procrastination causes in our lives. Are you listening to me? Procrastination can kill us and maims our children. It can be a slow, painful death of our bodies turning on us because of a constant surge of adrenaline with immune dysfunction, or it can be a quick one with a car accident. You also pile on weight quicker that way too. You have a choice to stop this right now, she says. If I can ever get you to feel the peace that comes from just a few simple routines in your life, you will never go back to living this way. Here is what you have to do. Number one, set your priorities. I know you hear this all the time, so I'm gonna make this very clear to you. Um, is talking on the phone or the computer more important than your children or your life? Is watching that movie better for you than a good night's sleep? Very true. Number two, lay out your clothes for tomorrow. Use your creativity to accessorize your clothes. I find that. I, I pick out jewelry and, and my earrings. Everything is betterly, better matched when I do that. Shoes too. Uh, this will help you to pick out your clothes. Okay, let me see. Did I do this right? Use your creativity to accessorize your clothes. We love to do this, but we never have time. We are so rushed. Yeah. Number three, go to bed at a decent hour. We can have, uh, we can have time for ourselves in the morning when we are not rushing around like a, like a chicken with our heads cut off. Number four, put the alarm clock on the other side of the room uh, so you will not be tempted to hit the snooze button. This is an ineffect. This is an ineffective habit that you have. When you start getting seven or eight hours of sleep each night, you will not need that snooze button anymore. You need to get your feet on the floor to turn off the alarm. Very good plan, I've heard of that before. Number five, put gas in your car when it is not empty. I do that. I plan ahead and I mean, back in August, I had a week of training uh, that was about an hour away from where I, every day I had to go an hour away and every night I came home and I gassed up my car before I came home. Even before I, I, I went through the door, I did it before I even got home. Uh, so that's a good idea. Look for times when you are not in a hurry to stop and fill up. And uh, by the way, I wanted to tell you something. There was a lady in my training class that didn't do that. She came to work on the way to uh, the training. She stopped at a gas station, put gas in her car, forgot her wallet at the gas station and went to work. Showed up at work, plenty of time. She had to go halfway back home to get her wallet when she realized she left it at the gas station. Now, we were told you're not supposed to miss even an hour of, of training. And so she took a chance on, uh, on, on not, uh, you know, keeping her job. So that was a big risk. But anyway, so number five, put gas in your car when it is not empty. Look for times when you are not in a hurry to stop and fill up before you are running on fumes. This will not cost you as much money if you are only, <clears throat> excuse me, putting in half a tank. You never know when you may need gas to get you to the emergency room in the middle of the night. That's very true. Um, number six, as part of your, your before bed routine, put everything you need to take with you tomorrow by the front door or in your car. This will keep you from having to search for things tomorrow morning and 
uh, from forgetting that important paper that you have to present. Number seven, start your day without the chaos of the television by listening to beautiful music. I like to do that at night. Real relaxing music while I'm getting dinner and eating dinner. The television is filled with bad news that we can do nothing about. Open up your heart to a new morning with your favorite music or silence. That's a beautiful thing. Listen to the birds. Oh, I love to sit, drink my coffee in my wingback chair, watch out the window. There's like no traffic and you can hear the birds chirping and oh, it's so nice. I love doing that. Okay, number eight, get up 15 minutes before the rest of the family so that you can um, be dressed to lace up shoes before their little feet hit the floor. You will be in control. Put on those shoes whether or not you have to wear heels to work. You can change just before you walk out the door because you would have to put them by the front door. All this is done because you laid out your whole outfit the night before. From jewelry to shoes to ho and hose, there you go. You check your calendar and you know what to wear. Uh, also too, check the weather. What's the weather gonna be like tomorrow? Number nine, without all the rushing, you can sit down and eat breakfast fit for the queen that you are. <laughs> I love that. It may just be a yogurt smoothie, but you will be filling up your personal a fuel tank with good nutritious food, not junk on the run. You may also have fewer digestion problems when you slow down your food consumption. Oh, I love that one. Taking care of ourselves every day, guys. Number 10, now you are in your car and not rushing to get to work because you factored in your drive time into your morning routine. You have even added a few extra minutes for traffic and you may surprise everyone by being at work early or getting the kids to school without having to write a late note. Or remember that lady a few days ago, quite a few days ago, that said she had 45 minutes of extra in the morning and she made uh, muffins for her kids before they got out of bed. That was on a work day. Uh, let's see. This will mean no speeding ticket and no uh, and some extra money in your pocket because your insurance has not gone up because of the points and your off of your driver's license. Every single thing we procrastinate about can be put to uh, into this avalanche scenario. She's very right. Just stop and think when you hear yourself saying, I don't have time or I don't feel like it right now. We are never going to feel like scrubbing the toilet, but it sure is nice when you are hugging that piece, that piece of porcelain during a round of stomach flu. Very true. We don't have to feel like doing it to just get up off our fannies and do something. With this attitude, we are getting it out of the way so we can go play and enjoy our day without the stress and guilt that comes from procrastinating. I like to do that in the evening after dinner. If I'm really tired, I, am, I don't want to, you know, I, I really don't want to get up and do so, I want to rest. No, I have to eat, I have to get up, get the dishes done, get my nighttime routine done because then on the other end of that, that's when I have time to rest and it's closer to bedtime and then I can wind down really like to do that. If you will just start with one little piece of this essay, you will be slowing down the effects of the avalanche. I love that. Soon you will begin to feel the peace that that have from that you have from my morning and before bed routines. If you will just get a small taste of this peace, you will not want to live in the chaos of procrastination another day. Don't you love it, guys? Okay, so there you go. All right. That was a long one. I'm, I'll try to be quick, guys. I don't want to make this too long. Okay. Dear Fly Lady, this one says calendars. Okay, calendars can save you money. So this lady writes in and says, her husband and I sat down. Oh, this is a good one. Husband and I sat down and went over our finances. Fun, fun, right? We were always cutting it close. Money was gone the same day it came in and there was never enough. It was sometimes even groceries or bills, not both. Well, we figured we were going to the grocery store three or four times per month, spending about two to three hundred dollars each time. I know, that's crazy. I think that's normal, actually. Uh, we figured we spend about 800, give or take a few, per month on groceries. Usually, we were throwing away so much food. Whole roasts that were cooked to make sandwiches, but then something better was there. Leftovers saved because someone might eat them. Yuck, so sad. Uh, so much waste. There was a time, let me see. There was a time in my life when I was a young girl. This, right here, this is so good, you guys. Look at your past. Listen to what this lady's saying. There was a time in my life when I was a young girl with a baby and a man who didn't care if we had food or not. Not only did we not have food, sometimes we didn't have power to use the stove to cook any bit of food we might have. 
Uh, I remember eating a raw potato once because I was so hungry and I had to eat since I was breastfeeding my little one. You would think this alone would have made me appreciate what I have and not waste, but I think it did the opposite. I think it kind of was like that with me. I was almost hoarding food. I would buy and buy and buy until the fridge wouldn't close. The cupboards were full and the freezers could barely close. Food would rot and be thrown away, which was basically like throwing money away. I know I would never throw money in the garbage. Why would I ever throw food in the garbage? But she did. About one month ago, I began making meal plans, shopping lists, reading sale flyers, and just aware, being aware of what we eat. Her husband pointed out today, in this month we saved, get this, $450. That's more than half of what they were spending on food before. She saved half by just doing the, what she say, meal planning, shopping, you know, grocery list, and check, check, checking the sales. She says that is almost a rent payment. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. For so long, when you posted about menu plans, I would scoff and say, that doesn't work for our family. In all honesty, I didn't want it to work. I was content and wasting money we barely had. It made me feel safe, I think, not anymore. Uh, I, have the, I have the menu plan up, posted, the kids know what we're having, there's little to no waste, and if there are leftovers, I try to work them into a stew or soup to freeze or take to my elderly bachelor father-in-law. I feel so good about our financial situation now. See that? It, it affects your finances. I am expecting a large increase in my income in the next month. So with the money we save and my income, we should be right on track instead of throwing money, throwing more money in the garbage can. Uh, so you guys, um, uh, think about that. $450 a month. Now, if you're barely making by an extra $450 a month, that is huge. You could pay off debt in no time if you had that much money to put aside. My gosh. Fly Lady writes and says, my grandmother told me many years ago that any food you threw into the trash was like tossing dollar bills into the garbage. You can save lots of money with just five minutes of planning. In our control journal, we have a whole section for menu planning. With a calendar and a little planning, you can save money. Menu planning is our habit of, for November. Oh, that's coming up next uh, in November. Let's get jump start. Let's get a jump start and see how much money we can save before we start spending it on the holidays. Perfect. Um, oh, there you go, guys. We I never thought of that, but we're doing this in October so we can be at peace. But m what about if we can save more money? Oh my gosh, we'll have more money for Christmas. All right. Uh, make the commitment to eat out of your freezer and pantries this week and, and this week and next month. These savings could be just like a Christmas club account. You can have fun with this too. Are you with me? I find that I, I, I because you have to, um, you get more creative with your, with your cooking when you do that. And it's a good idea to do that every now and then to, um, maybe every six months or so, it's a good idea to do that. You know, live out of your pantry and your freezer and just use what you have. Um, and for a week or two or a month or however long it takes to get through that stuff. And you become really creative. You'd be amazed, you guys. Your calendar is a great tool to help menu plan. Today is Wednesday. Clean out your refrigerator and make surprise chicken. Plan your menus for the next few days from your freezer and pantry. This is a great way to save money. Use post-it note stickies, uh, sticky tops to make this easy. Isn't that great? I love it, guys. Okay. All right, this is getting too long. I think I'm going to have to cut these short. Maybe I'll put these last two on tomorrow. But I was thinking of tomorrow's going to be our last day. So I was thinking about um, not doing all this stuff. I just kind of want to do a recap of everything. So you guys, I'm going to end it here. This, she's got a couple more great emails, but I, I can't do it. The video is going to be too long. All right, you guys. So thanks again to one more day. One more day, you guys. How have our lives gotten in order? Isn't it fantastic? I love it. I hope you're loving it too. Thank you guys for joining me. Thanks for following along and joining in and commenting and liking and sharing and all that good stuff. And I will see you all tomorrow for our last day. Bye-bye.